Okay, I was just looking for people doing the double slit experiment. She said, I did the double slit experiment at home. And so I look into this. Well, I figure out, I find out. I commented on this two years ago. I said, I have done similar experiments using Tune Venturi and lasers. And here she is showing us. Now, I'm going to play what she has to say about this. It started off, she's showing the light experiments with just a single hair and we can see the the interference patterns very clearly she was she did a nice job but she's missing the, the the big picture i think so let's see what she has to say and i was hoping to get and i never get a reaction from anybody and i didn't get one from here either so hopefully maybe i can get in touch with her i'd love to to uh to be involved in her research because it's basically the same research as I'm doing. Okay, everybody knows the wave-particle duality they talk about. Is it a wave? Is it a particle? Well, it's both. And she's talking about individual particles. She can't understand how it makes a wave and then how come sometimes it comes out straight and sometimes it comes out curved. Let's just jump up to 13 minutes or so and I'll let her explain what she's hoping to do here. All right, so she's saying, do this stuff at home. Make sure you don't have a real powerful because you can burn your cat's That's eyes out or stuff. even your own eyes. Anyway, it was worth buying the smoke machine. This experiment looks just magical in real life. And all I've done to capture it is use my phone, nothing fancy. See, the same I set thing. the double set up a few meters away and blocked all the lights and turned on the smoke machine and all of these beams suddenly became visible. Here you can see that there are beams of light going to all of the dots in the double slit pattern. But to see it even more clearly, let's turn around and look toward the laser. And now, so many beams become visible. The double slit doesn't split the light up into two beams. It splits the light into many, many beams. She doesn't understand. It's not a light, just one beam going this way. It's spinning like this. Some of it's spinning that way, some of it's spinning all, and there's a bazillion beams coming out at the same time. They're very, very tiny, but that's what creates these interference patterns. So why was this experiment such a revelation for me? Well, it felt like I was actually seeing the light be a wave for the first time. Let me show you what I mean with this laser. Here you can see the narrow beam of the laser, but if I put this paper in the way, a wave should spread out. And yeah, that's exactly what the laser does. But to see it more clearly, let's add some smoke. This looks almost unreal. The laser beam is spread out, but only in this one plane, just like we'd predict for a wave. If I remove the paper and put in the double slit instead, you can see the two sides of the beam interfere and cancel out. Again, just like a wave should. Seeing this was the first time that I actually felt in my gut that light is somehow wave-like. Up until now, I just thought that the waves of quantum mechanics were abstract and they're not. They're actually there and you can see pretty clear evidence of them. And so since then, I've started taking the whole wave picture much more seriously. On the other hand, I've become more cautious about imagining light as particles. Photons are much more nuanced, clearly, than I thought before, and I want to try and do experiments with them as well to understand how I should be thinking of them, which is why Quantum Experiments at Home is going to be a series. I hope you have lots of questions left about light, and if you do, please leave them in the comments, and we'll try and sort them out together in future. I did. I tried to leave it, and I just didn't get any response. Now, in future episodes, maybe... But I, I, I understand this quite well, and you can too. It's very simple. The particle has a, a magnetic field surrounding it, and the field has to plow through everything in front of it and makes a wave. But the particle is the, what causes the field. If you don't have the field, you don't have a wave. The particle makes the field, and I show that in my experiments extremely well. It's... it's it's not deniable. And she's using the same thing we use, just a cheap little laser and a cell phone. Okay, my friends, this is fabulous. I've been, you know, working on a uh, dipole electron flood theory. And this is the only person I've seen. They're doing their own double slit experiment at home. But it appears she's being funded by 
by somebody big. Now, I commented on this two years ago, asking if we could, you know, talk and so forth, and I never heard anything back. But this is the demonstration home version of double slit experiment using readily available materials. Yes, a cell phone and just a little Venturi or whatever. She used a hair, an actual hair. Now, I've been looking over here. She's still, she said she's going to make a series out of this, and I, I go into this a little deeper shortly. And I'm watching her four months ago, a year ago, three months ago, so forth. She's, and the latest one was this one, the biggest lie about the double slit experiment. I haven't looked at it yet, but I have been following her a little bit. This is what I was just looking at was this one. I did the quantum eraser Wix. experiment at home. Wix, to tell your story. In quantum mechanics, okay. things behave differently the moment they know you're watching. I'm going to do an experiment. When I heard that, that flipped me out because that's called the observer effect. I, nobody believes that anymore. I don't know if she does or not. I'm going to be looking into this and see what it has to say about it. Your inter, inter, the observer effect is only there if you use something that either pushes light in or some energy into it to change it, or you're extracting some energy out of it with a sensor or something in there. If you're back here with CMOS, you do not affect the outcome. It has nothing to do with you observing. You're just getting hit by the electrons. That's the difference between the observer effect using charge coupled devices. You're, you're, you're coupled into that charge instead of CMOS, which you sit back here and just let it bang into you. Now, if you've been around me, you know that I show there's a wave, but the particle makes the wave. The particle itself, which is the photon, is surrounded by a big bubble of energy. That bubble of energy has to go through all the rest of the particles that are in space, so it makes a wave just like it's pushing through water. And that's the acceleration of light. That's not supposed to be allowed. That's the black and the white in front of it. Here's the acceleration of the light. And it's accelerating because there's a Venturi here. This all this stuff is nothing special. This is, I mean, this is so simple, it's unbelievable. And here's coming out of the Venturi, tuned to the point where there's some black and some white coming out. You see the black is back here? That's the pusher against the white. And the particles themselves are these particles right here. When they go through the Venturi, they separate. The white goes in and the black stays back. You see it? The black stays back here and the white goes through. And then the black reattaches. Those are muons, the black ones. These are electron showers, the white ones. Totally understood now. And um, again, avoided. Even she won't respond. I don't know. Nobody will respond. Whether I'm not getting through to people, I don't know. But I get no responses, not even one question about this. I did get through to Fermilab, and that turned into a, a really nasty interaction between myself and Don Lincoln. You know, and in my opinion, and it's my opinion, I have every right to express it, he's not doing his job. He should not be representing Fermilab, and he should have looked into this. This goes back 15 years, more than 15 years ago. He's, here's what they found, here's what we found, same particles. I use light, they use gigantic things, smash them to bits, huge chunks like this. We use this. Right there, that's it. So we never had all that mess to deal with. They had huge things. All right, so that's my stuff. Let's see what she has to, you know, that observer effect thing. If she believes that, I, I can't believe she believes that, but maybe. Okay, let's see what she has to say. She, at first, she's talking about the observer effect. Let's see what she says. In quantum mechanics, things behave differently the moment that you know you're looking. Things behave differently the moment they know you're watching. I'm going to do an experiment where light changes from this to this, all because it was being observed. But why do quantum objects care if they're being watched? This is the mystery that got me obsessed with quantum mechanics years ago. But I love this experiment because the three variations of it explain three crucial facts about measurements. And the third might even be a solution to the measurement problem itself.
In the double slit experiment, you shine light on two very narrow slits, which I've represented here, like this, and you can see that the light sort of spreads out and it goes through both slits. In fact, we know that this is what happens even with the laser, because you can actually see it. If light is somehow wave-like, then this kind of makes sense, because it's like saying the wave will spread out, and then it will go through both of these slits and make new little waves. Eventually, these two little waves will spread and overlap. Okay, I can see she's, she's not picking up on this. Light does not... Okay, my friends, I'm a little disappointed. She's still going with the part of a wave thing, or wave thing. I don't know if she knows about the part of... I don't, uh, she's, she's way off, let's put it that way. I showed light screws through there. And that's why some goes that way, some goes this way, but it's the particle coming through like this, and it creates that pattern. Just as I have shown you, it has nothing to do with waves flapping over each other. Now, she's saying mathematically it's extremely nice. Well, when you see the actual evidence, it's mathematically, it doesn't matter. See, this is where this is what happens. They they take a, an idea of something. Mathematics is going to solve everything. Math going on here. We already know that it can happen. It does happen in quantum mechanics, and it's all mathematical. Well, I am a, a, a material science person. These drawings and so forth don't really mean much to me. All right, that right there is the double slit experiment but using Venturi slit, not just a flat plate. The Venturi forces the particles to come together, and when they do, they basically ex literally explode. The black part stays this side, and the white goes into a shower, and then the black comes back. This section right here is a subatomic nuclear explosion. This is smaller than an, than an atom, which means it's inside the nucleus, which is subatomic. This is the explosion, which is fission. The black has removed itself from the white, and this is where the black comes back, is fusion. This is accelerated light. Normally it makes a wave because it has to, the particle has a field surrounding it, which is huge. Those fields are, are magnetic fields, and they push every other magnetic particle, and everything is magnetic. So all of this stuff, those little dots everywhere, all those little dots are from gases and so forth that are in the air, dust particles and, and that. And they're being excited because this thing's trying to pull through there very fast, and it has a big field that's dragging along with it. Here it separates, here it joins back together. All right, this happens single, double, triple slit. It doesn't matter, I don't think. Rod Warren did this, but I, I, I stayed with him pretty close. Now, this is nothing more than light spinning, and light spins just like this as it goes forward. Some is going to go off to that side, some is going to go off to this side, but primarily there's going to be most of it's going to go in the center. And there's a whole batch of these coming down at the same time, not just one. So they go all over here. And that's what gives you these perfect, look at, look at how perfect those interference patterns are. And those are, those are repulsion patterns. The, whites, they, the white is the particle, and it sets up its own stripe. And it says, you stay away, you stay away. And then they just go straight down on the line. And that's what creates that. All right, this makes it extremely obvious. These are the photons spinning. And this is blue, and it's coming through a rocket ship. And then it's slowing down. You see, it's almost going perfectly straight, and then uh, it starts to drift to the left. It means it's spinning to the right. And out here, we can see there's two particles, and there's only just one dot back here. As it goes slower and slower, we can see that there's two. But you can also see that it's spinning in a circle. The reason that is drifting to the left is because it's spinning to the right and slowing down. And then we see the two particles. Blue, we really didn't do much with. It's just too fast. 
But the red is uh, easy to see right here. These are the red particles. And these are all photons, but some of them are in the formation form here. They're not really photons. This, these are full photons. And the only reason is they're coming straight on. They're going to whack straight into that Venturi. And you see how this is a downspin and this is an upspin. It depends on where the leading edge of the particle is, if it's white or not. If it's white, in my mind, it's a downspin. If it's white at the top, like this one, it's an upspin. And that's how they do it. They, they just do that. It's called a muon wobble. And I can show that in the green even, I think, a little better. All right. And this also shows that they're polarized towards Earth. You see how this is straight up and down, straight up and down, straight up and down. And as it's going out this way, it's still straight up and down. Even though it's going that way. Why wouldn't it turn this way? They go, they go like this. Just It's polarized towards the Earth. Now, that again is the dipoles, particles, back to back, makes up a photon. This bottom one is getting charged up now because it was leading. And it's going to flip to the back, and this one here, which is dimmer, is going to go to the front and start to charge up. That's how they, they do, do the muon wobble as they go through the air, through any medium. Same thing in space. Space is not empty. Even the, the, the Fermilab and all of them say the same thing. It's not empty. This is 13 years ago. Empty space isn't empty. This is Fermilab. It's saturated. They call it like having the head of root beer is just bubbling with all these particles out there. They know it's not empty. The same time frame, 2013, they also know that we found these particles just as they did. Only we didn't have to do it with a gigantic super collider spending trillions of dollars. We did it with for almost nothing. But we found the same two particles they found. The black one with the glowy edge And then the glowy one that can get big and small. And they say the same thing that I say. That has all the mass and knocks things over. This has no mass to speak of, but it has all the energy. And here they are in their light formation, which is just nothing more than photons. And that photon is, is tight. That, they do not break apart. The only way they can break, get them to break the black from the white is you have to use a generator. A generator will do that because it's ripping the white away from the black and then storing the white in, in a battery or wherever. And then it's making a connection back to the black. And it'll go right through you. It'll go right through anything. That white is really got to be ripped away. And a generator will do that. Generation. But we're doing it right here with the Venturi for, for nothing. It's just being plowed through here. Only white's coming through here. If we could collect it right there, put a little bucket over here, and run a photodiode down through it so the photon, photons go down through the diode, which is a gate. It goes through and it can't get back. can't get back. And it goes to wherever you want to use it. You just use it right away or put it in a battery or do whatever you want. And you carry it around in a little lunchbox. And you could have, I mean, almost unlimited amounts of energy. And we're doing exactly what they're asking for. Muon neutrinos, which is the black balls. And the electron showers, which is the white. We need to get this looked at. This, is, this goes over 10 years. And I presented this to them. To everybody. To everybody. And it should have been looked into. I, I, th I don't see why we can't get free energy. And there's no patent available to this because I made it available to everybody when we first discovered it. I said, here's how we did it. Somebody do this. Nobody did it that I know of.